missing evidence. So let's have a look at some of these key points. Mr M says he saw a Facebook request for information in relation to the Modern robbery by Anton Waters. Anton Waters is a Sinn Féin councillor in County Loud. Anton in turn puts Mr M in contact with Mr Pat Murray, Senior Investigating Officer. Mr M gives his statement on the 15th of May 2017 and Mr M says Aaron told him at the Tombstone Bar at 5am. Yes, that's me, I shot the guard. We have a note of caution here. We have to date been extremely cautious with our reveal in relation to the American aspect of Aaron's case. To this end, in relation to Mr M, I wish to draw your attention to an article written and published by journalist Barry Cummins. I will now read you a paragraph from that article which re relates directly to Mr M. The article was published on the 12th of August 2020 and reads, One man, originally from County Armagh, told Garvey that a man named Brady had made a self-incriminating comment at a bar. The witness didn't know Aaron Brady, but did identify him in a photograph later shown to him. This witness was willing to give evidence by video link in the recent trial. However, the trial judge, Mr Justice Michael White, ruled that the evidence of this particular witness was inadmissible. There ends the statement. It is at this point we, the Brady family, would like to make an appeal to Garda Commissioner Drew Harris to please review why this evidence was ruled inadmissible and review the actions of the detectives Mary and Ogle as we believe their actions here in this interview were reprehensible. Now back to Mr M's statement where he talks about his interaction with Aaron at an after wedding party late on a Saturday night early Sunday morning. We have a number of the groom's family and we also have our daughter Lorraine that will verify clearly Aaron wasn't there or ever in the tombstone on that day or night. And there is a large number of people from the wedding party will also confirm that the first time they saw Aaron that weekend was actually on the Sunday morning in Moriarty's pub on McLean Avenue. Mr M's statement is riddled with inaccuracies regarding times and dates for the wedding. Some other things to note about Mr M and these incidents happened immediately before he left Ireland to go to the USA where Mr M was involved with the Committee for Restorative Justice, a group set up in Northern Ireland which brings victims of crime face to face with the perpetrators of that crime and Mr M was not a victim. There are more details about how and why Mr M left Ireland but that's for another day. Mr M's immigration status at this time he made the statement is very questionable and of course we are investigating that status at this time. In his initial statement to Senior Investigating Officer Pat Murray, Mr M asks, how do I get the money? This is in reference to the reward offered for information leading to a conviction. Oh, and it now appears that Mr M is involved financially in his own bar in New York. The next part of the extraordinary story that is Mr M, lo and behold, his first cousin, whom we'll call AM, also makes a similar statement, saying Aaron told him that he had shot a cop. Things to note about Mr AM, he has issues here in Northern Ireland with cannabis, cocaine, cash and ammunition. But again, that is for a future episode. So there you have it folks, Mr M and his first cousin in a city of 10 million people. Aaron Brady randomly tells them both on two different occasions that he shot a cop. We are to believe here that there are no vested interests going on. Aaron Brady supposedly makes a vital admission to two first cousins at different times and locations in a city of 10 million people. 
and in turn, they never tell each other this astounding information, even though they are living in a small family circle. If we look at the statement here of Mr M, we look at his association with Sinn Féin councillor Anton Waters. He says he played under 18 soccer with Newry City with Anton Waters, which we believe to be inaccurate. After much questioning and searching, no record can be found of this. Mr M also says in a statement that he has contact with Anton Waters on Facebook. But this is difficult to believe when you know some of the history of both Mr Waters and Mr M. We believe Mr M, you have told a tissue of lies. You the public may ask the question, have we checked these details with Councillor Waters? We most certainly have. I have sent uh, Mr Waters a number of emails going back to 2018, but there was no response. And you will see from the email on screen now. This is the final email I sent to Mr Waters, Sinn Féin councillor, in December 2018, and it reads as follows. Anton Nicara, I email you again following my previous attempts via email and telephone. I cannot understand why after 10 weeks you have not had the manners to reply to me, even to tell me to F off. I stated clearly in my email on October the 3rd that I had concerns about the policing in relation to the investigation into the murder of Garda Adrian Donoghue. I think when we take into consideration a number of events in the Cooley Peninsula and the ongoing revelations in relation to our security services that the very least you as a public rent representative could have done was to contact me. I should also point out that it was not Aaron Brady or the Brady family who brought your name into the book of evidence in the Donoghue murder. I would like to speak to you but if you feel unable to do so please have the courtesy to tell me so. It's Michel Lamas, Tony Brady. We wanted Councillor Waters to clarify just a few of the following. Did he play under 18 soccer with Mr M? Is he friends with Mr M? Was he aware that he was brought before the Committee of Restorative Justice in what appears to be his involvement in several serious crimes? And I would also like to ask Councillor Waters, did Senior Investigating Officer Mark Phillips or Mary tell him that Mr M and Mr M's first cousin also made a statement against Aaron Brady. Important points to note here is that Mr A M went to his lawyer in New York and sent a letter to Angarda Siakona stating he was put under duress by the authorities to make a statement. Just a few short weeks ago, as we embarked on the American aspect of Aaron's case, I tried once again to speak to Councillor Waters. I did doorstep him at his place of work. He wasn't happy and I, of course I apologised. But I see no other option as we were totally blanked on our previous efforts to speak with Councillor Waters. Following our chat on that day at Mr Waters' place of employment, Anton Waters agreed to meet us and watch the video in relation to Mr M before we broadcast it. In the early afternoon of the next day, I sent the following message to Mr Waters. Hey Anton, Tony Brady here, just following up on yesterday evening. Would it suit you to meet us this evening, Thursday, at Murphy's Caracastican Fork Hill, at the car park at front of shop, six o'clock, question mark. And we were furnished with the following reply. Tony, as a county councillor, I can provide no assistance on this and will not be meeting you. Please do not call to my place of work to see me. Please do not contact me again. And in turn, this is our final message to councillor Anton Waters. This is extremely disappointing. As a public representative in the Cooley Peninsula, I am certain you are fully aware there is a general concern publicly that there is something wrong with my son's conviction. 
I would appreciate if you could tell us, is this decision you have made a decision you've made yourself personally, or was that decision made at party level Sinn Féin? I sincerely hope you have the courtesy to reply and you will not be contacted by us again. It's Michel Lamas, Tony Brady. Needless to say, there has been no reply. We feel, and it's only our opinion, this is no way for a public representative to conduct themselves and to speak to people. As far as we can see, it is the truth that is the only enemy in a world made of lies. As a concerned public representative, Mr Waters, were you ever furnished with the information by Ungarish Iacona? Because if you weren't, this would leave serious concerns on the table. So ladies and gentlemen, this is just a brief synopsis into Mr M's involvement in our son Aaron's case. As you can see, there are many, many unanswered questions, but questions we will seek to get the answer to. There has 